Hello students. Today we are going to learn another topic in transient currents, uh, which is a continuation of what we have learned earlier. You have learned how a capacitor will get discharged through a resistance and when it is connected to a power supply. Now you have also learned how a capacitor will get discharged through the resistance, right? So you have also formulated relations connecting these. Now today we are going to understand how this leakage of the current by leakage of charge by capacitor can be made use to measure high resistance values. You all are familiar with the relation for the capacitor. Charge decay of a capacitor as Q equal to Q0 e raised to minus T divided by CR, right? So, which means this is Q is the instantaneous charge and Q0 is the maximum charge attained by the capacitor. C is the capacitance value, R is the resistor value connected to that and T is the time, instantaneous time, which we are talking. Okay. So, it means that as time goes on, the maximum charge in the capacitor will get decayed exponentially. So, that decay is decided by the rate of decay is decided by the time constant which we said as CR. Now from this relation I can write as I am if I take Q to this side I can and E raised to to the other side I can write this expression as Q0 by Q into 1 by E raised to minus T divided by CR right. So, this is actually e raised to t divided by cr. Okay. So, now I take logarithm on both sides. So, log to the base e q0 by q is equal to here also you know log to the base e e raised to t divided by cr and you know that this is equal to t by cr. Okay. So now if I want to, I am going to express this relation uh, for R. That is, I want to find what the value of R is. So that is R is equal to, I can write T by C into log uh, to the base E uh, Q0 by Q. Okay. And uh, if I change the base of E log to the base E, to log the base 10 and I can write, rewrite the expression as 2.303 you know that log to the base E can be converted to 2.303 times log to the base 10 so 2.303 C log to the base 10 Q0 by Q okay so this is the expression which can be utilized to find the value of R then and our next question is why should we find the value of R uh, in this manner, right? Many times we know that resistors are used, resistors are um, calculated or measured using multimeters and such other uh, such uh, devices, right? So, but when you use such de devices, there is limitation for the value of the resistor to be measured, which can be measured. That is, you cannot measure resistors whose values are very, very high. That is, about, around about more than 20 mega ohm. You cannot use, you cannot use multimeters to measure the resistor. So, this is actually one, or using this expression, you can easily find out the value of resistor. So that is, that that is what we say that uh, this equation can be, or this method can be utilized to find the value of high resistors. Now, uh, why actually capacitance or this circuit or the concept behind this charge decay in a capacitor is utilized? You know that this expression which shows that log Q0 by Q, this basically has come from the uh, concept of um, decay of charge in a capacitor. So that means that if I can in some way measure the maximum charge and the instantaneous charge of a capacitor, I can easily find out the value of the resistor connected along with it or I can say that in the circuit 
where you have the decaying of the capacitance taking place in along with the capacitor if you keep a very high resistor which whose resistance has to be measured if i can keep that resistance whose resistance has is very very high and which cannot be measured using the normal methods if i keep that resistance along with the capacitor in the capacitor uh, discharging circuit uh, charging discharging circuit then i can use uh, this formula uh, to calculate the value of r so that means that i should know first know value of the capacitor then the value of q0 by q if i can sum in man sum or uh, some means find out q0 by q i can easily find out the value of the very high values of the resistor connected to that and thus high resistance values can be found out and here we are going to discuss one such method uh, or one such circuit and analysis of it to um, use uh, which which can be utilized to find high values of resistors this is the circuit which is utilized for this purpose you know that we have a uh, e sub power supply e uh, connected to the capacitor and then you have a resistor r in parallel connected with that or uh, this is the resistance whose value has to be measured i have a key along with that k2 then you have another in parallel to r or parallel to c you have another uh, instrument connected actually this is called as the ballistic galvanometer so before going into the details i'll uh, share tell you what man, in brief on in brief i will show you what gal ballistic galvanometer is and then i have a key along with that okay so we can say that the supply e is connected in parallel uh, to the bg ballistic galvanometer then to the resistance r and then the capacitor so everywhere you can see the uh, presence of key so uh, when you press put this key on or when you press this key uh, one circuit will come into uh, closed mode and the other will we can be kept as open so depending upon our requirement the keys can be closed and uh, we can allow the capacitor to get, to get charged and then discharged um, through the various components which we uh, prefer here what i have shown here is a ballistic galvanometer basically the inside of that uh, which you may not see from outside because from outside what you may be seeing is um, a very uh, a box where you don't see much of the things which is inside it okay so this is basically it contains a magnet basically it contains a magnet and inside the magnet you have a wound coil and then um, a, a coil is there okay so now what happens is when capacitor or when charges flow through this coil under the influence of the magnetic field this coil will oscillate so when the coil oscillate you can see that above the coil a mirror is connected attached along with that or it i can say it is suspended uh through us actually it is suspended through a phosphor bronze tin wire to the coil so what happens is when the coil oscillates the mirror can also uh, mirror will also oscillate along with it so even if a very small charge passes through the coil uh this galvanometer is highly sensitive that in the presence of the magnetic field this coil will oscillate and this oscillation will produce oscillations in the mirror now if i allow some light to fall on the mirror what happens is when the mirror oscillates this produces a reflection on this scale so this light will fall on the mirror and the reflection of the mirror uh, is made to fall on a scale arrangement which is kept um, in front of it so what happens is so when the mirror oscillates actually the light which is falling on this it is getting reflected on the scale that image will also oscillate on the scale so actually when we say that when the charge flow the the uh, mirror will actually uh, deflect so mirror when the mirror oscillate what happens is that once if the light was once, once here or when it when it start oscillating basically the light may go and it may show a reading somewhere over here and that is what we say as the throw of the mirror galvanometer or ballistic galvanometer so from this 
throw or from the change in the reflected light from the mirror you can understand what is the charge flowing through. so or, the, or i can say that the throw which is shown by the mirror that is proportional to the charge flowing through the coin so this is all about the ballistic galvanometer so this is used because uh, this is very sensitive to even very small charges so this is basically used for this particular purpose with, or in, for the particular experiment which we are discussing about now coming back to our original circuit you can see uh, all these connected now we shall start the experiment first okay so first what we are going to do is we are putting the key k k1 closed okay so we put k1 switch we will press the key so that is k1 will get closed so we can say k, but keeping the k2 and k3 open so what happens is only this particular circuit will be closed so now what happens the capacitor will get charged by the power supply here or by the potential e the capacitor will get charged now what what you do is once the capacitor is fully charged you actually keep the k1 open or actually uh, unpress it or um, release the key okay so when you release the key this becomes again open right now what you do is um, and once the k1 is opened at the same moment moment you put the k3 closed pressed you press k3 that is k3 is closed so what happens the capacitor was charged fully to the value k0 and after completely charging you actually um, opened this k1 at the same instant you pressed k3 so that means now the circuit is closed right so when the circuit is closed the maximum charge capacitor is got got has got no maximum charge so when you press k3 spontaneously or at that instant what happens the capacitor will discharge through the uh, bg so that means that based on the charge q0 the bg will show a throw right at the beginning capacitor already was fully charged to q0 now when you unpress or when you uh, open k1 and then keep k3 closed so bg will show a first throw which is maximum which is corresponding to the maximum capacitance or maximum charge of the capacitor so let me say that that q0 is the charge of the capacitor and correspondingly the bg measures a throw of theta 0 now what we do is again you keep this open and then again you are going to allow the capacitor get, to get charged because once the capacitor is allowed capac charge is allowed to pass through the balance ballistic galvanometer it will first show a throw theta zero but then after the capacitor will get discharged through, through the catch after the charge get discharged through the ballistic galvanometer the charge will decay so now we are allowing to next time we are allowing the capacitor to get again charged with maximum value so what you do is next time so this is actually first time you kept k1 closed so i'll i'll write so it will be clear k1 closed first time okay then what you do in the next ins instant is open k1 right and then uh, k3 closed so this has to take place very uh, spontaneously um, otherwise um, okay now what happens is the third one is that you keep again uh, open k3 and then i am again closing k1 so at this time uh, again k2 and k3 is remaining open then k1 is closed which means that again the capacitor will get charged fully right to q0 okay now what you do is at the next time you again open this k1 and then you allow the capacitor to discharge through this high resistance value now at the fourth time what you are doing is you again open k1 k1 and then uh, open k1 and uh, then k2 is closed so now what happens is the capacitance uh, k1 k2 is kept open uh, closed for some time say t so for a measured time t 
a very small time it may be so for a measured time t you keep the resistance or or you allow the capacitor to pass through r charge to pass through r and then what you do is again you keep um okay then you again open the uh, k2 so when you k2 is kept open you know that uh, by the time when the uh, charge passes through the resistor for some time t the capacitance q0 the charge of the capacitor would have decayed so let me say that q is the charge of the capacitor after some time say t now i want to measure the q corresponding to that so that means i want to measure using the ballistic galvanometer the throw corresponding to the capacitor to the charge q so what you do is as soon as you open this k2 you again keep k3 closed so at that time so whatever charge was remaining in the capacitor that charge or that will be again discharged to this ballistic galvanometer so corresponding to q that is k3 closed and then corresponding to that q now it will make a throw on the ballistic galvanometer and let me say theta is the throw corresponding to the charge q okay so now it is the our experiment is over now actually from the throws theta 0 and theta which can be measured from the uh, scale which you have uh, kept uh, in front of the ballistic galvanometer according to the figure figure i showed you earlier uh we can measure the theta 0 and theta so that means this charge is directly proportional to the throws here so q0 by q which i saw in the previous uh, equation that is this q0 by q which we uh, have to find out in order to find the value of r that has been measured from the theta 0 by theta which we found out from the so theta 0 by theta which we found from the ballistic galvanometer now we can simply put the value of theta 0 by theta in the relation uh, which we have derived that is here i can put instead of uh, theta q0 by i can put log to the base 10 i can put instead of q0 uh, theta 0 theta 0 theta 0 by theta and then i can find the value of r so this is how uh, this using the concept of the decay of charge in a capacitor and making use of the uh, advantage of a ballistic galvanometer you can find the value of high resistance which we uh, which we, which otherwise is very difficult to be measured so i hope you understand this uh, understood this experiment and the concept of this uh, experiment and if you have any doubts you can please uh, comment so thank you very much